Hi, I'm Mrs. T. Math. Thanks for joining me. Today we're going to cover mean absolute deviation in 8th grade math. Finding the mean, or a measure of center, is using a single number to describe a data set. And we've found the mean in the past where you're finding the average of the data. The mean absolute deviation, or MAD, is a measure of variability or a single number to describe the spread of a data set. So let's go through the steps here because it is kind of a big process. So first we want to calculate the mean of the data set. So if I'm first going to find the mean, I'm going to add all my numbers together. And we can use a calculator to make this a little quicker. I get 112. And then I want to divide that by the total number of digits in the list. And in this case there are 8. And 112 divided by 8 equals 14. So I know the mean of this data here is 14. Now the second step is where we have to use that mean and find the distance between each of the data values. So this is where the absolute comes in because we know that absolute value means the distance from zero on a number line. So in this case when we're finding the absolute distance between the data value and the mean, we want to know what is the distance between each of these numbers in the list and our mean. So the distance between 14 and 14 is 0. The distance between 12 and 14 is 2. 13 to 14 is 1. 14 to 15 is 1. 12 to 14 is 2. 0. 17 to 14 is 3. And 15 to 14 is 1. Now, because it's absolute value, our distances are always going to be positive. So now once we've found the distance between each data value and the mean, we can calculate the MAD or the mean of the values in the second row. So we're going to now add up all of those numbers that we just found as far as the distance or the absolute between the two. When I add all these up, I end up with 10. And then I'm going to still divide those by 8 because there are 8 of them. So here I am finding the mean of the absolute values and this is going to be my deviation. And I know 10 divided by 8 is 1.25 or 1 and a quarter. So this is the average distance of each number on the list from the mean. So the closer to zero this mean absolute deviation number is, the less variability there is in the list. Since this is kind of a difficult concept, we're going to go over another example and we're going to show how the mean absolute deviation can be used in the real world to answer statistical questions and it also helps with the operation of businesses. Today we're going to look at the scores from the beginning of the year and scores from the end of the year so we can see a little bit of how this data can be used. So we're going to go back through the steps here. So for step one, I'm going to have to find the mean of both of these lists. The one on the left, the scores at the beginning of the year, when I add these up, is 664. I'm going to divide that by 8, which is the number of scores that I have here, and I get an average of 83. Then I'm going to find the mean of the scores at the end of the year. When I add these numbers up, I end up with 680. Again, I'm going to divide by 8. There's 8 scores here. And for this average, I get 85. Step 2 again is to find the distance between each of the means and each of the scores in the list. So the distance here is 6. Between 83 and 82 is 1. 85 would be 2. 79 is 4, 89 is 6, 84 is 1, 81 the distance is 2, and 87 is 4. And then I want to add all of those numbers up. So this one is going to end up being 26 when I add them all up. This other one over here, I'm going to go ahead and write them underneath again. So the distance between 82 to 85 is 3, this one is 1, this one's 4, 0, 4, 7, 6, and 3. And if I add all those up, I end up with 28. Then my last step is to calculate the mean absolute deviation. So I'm going to take 26, divide it by 8, and I end up with 3.25. Over here, if I take 28 and divide it by 8, I end up with 3.25. 
3.5. So what does this mean? This data can show us that the variability from the average or the mean was greater at the end of the year, but the mean did increase. So the average score increased here from 83 to 85. If I look at the mean of absolute deviation, I can see that it was actually closer to the mean of 83 at the beginning of the year than it was at the end of the year. So what that means is there was less variability at the beginning of the year from the average score or the mean score. At the end of the year, the variability grew a little bit, which could be good. That could mean that some students actually did a lot better than the mean score. Some of them might have done a lot worse than the mean score. If you look here at the actual numbers, you can see at the beginning of the year, we didn't have any A's. And at the end of the year, we had one A. At the beginning of the year, we also had two C's. And at the end of the year, we only had one. So just because the mean absolute deviation is larger doesn't mean that the data is bad, but it does mean that the beginning of the year, everyone was a little bit closer to that average score than they were at the end of the year. You can also use a spreadsheet if you're in Excel to put in a formula and it will calculate the mean and the mean absolute deviation for you. We're not gonna cover that in this video, but it is something that's possible. And so if you end up needing to use this in the future in a business or something in the real world, you can use the data in a spreadsheet to find or calculate the average for you. So this was a difficult concept, but it does just take some time to calculate the mean absolute deviation in eighth grade math. Thanks for joining me. I'm Mrs. D Math. Have a great day. Bye.